Hello, my name is Gerald Varela with Miami's Community News and Back Corner Comics. And today we're talking about two titles from Smudge, which is a imprint over at Living the Line. And I believe that they're focusing specifically on horror manga and horror manga that we haven't necessarily seen over here in the States, which is really cool because I feel like Junji Ito holds so much uh, stake over here in terms of horror manga. So they're really opening um, the floodgates for a variety of different titles to come over. And I think if these are the two titles that they start with, they're doing a really good job. So the first one we're going to look at today is going to be UFO Mushroom Invasion by Shirakawa Marina. I hope I said that correctly. Probably did not. Here we go. So I want to start off with the presentation here. Living the Line is a really great publisher when it comes to collected editions because they just know what they're doing. They're good with design. This UFO here looks fantastic. And then obviously this front image is just so spooky, cute, corny horror music. Um, but yeah, so this particular title, UFO Mushroom Invasion, is about a UFO invasion, but with a little bit of a twist. So it actually starts off with some info on previous UFO sightings to kind of build the tension. And something I found out about it uh, in the essay in the back is that this was actually uh, a rental manga title. So when manga started taking off in Japan, uh, they actually had a rental system where you could rent a single volume of a manga. And I believe that this assisted in parents renting the manga for their kids. So there's bits of information in here. So it is an informative kind of title. The story isn't necessarily the, fo the focus of it. It's more so on uh, the idea of an invasion and specifically how uh, Shirakawa... Uh, decided to kind of look at a UFO uh, invasion. So basically, a UFO lands in the mountains and a teacher and his student basically kind of witness it. And then they get captured and then, you know, they can't talk about it publicly. It's that type of story. It's something you've seen before. It's very much a, a B-movie plot, which is not a bad thing. I think it's great. It moves fast. It doesn't bother. This, there's no story necessarily to bog anything down. There's themes here, but the themes are very, they take a backseat to the kind of B horror atmosphere, which is definitely prevalent throughout it. So here you have the UFO, but basically uh, the, um, the aliens bring over a spore, a mushroom spore that ends up taking over. We'll see if we can find some of the designs. And so here are the mushroom uh, taking over corpses and using them like zombies. So again, it's your typical B-movie plot. But what I think is the most kind of interesting is these kind of sections. And there's about three or four of them where Shirakawa decides to kind of get more... Um, I don't know necessarily how to describe it, but he decides to... Describe things a little bit more in detail without it necessarily happening within the story of the comic, which I've, I've never seen in a manga, so it was kind of surprising. And so here's some of the art. And there's also lots of great folklore throughout this, uh, this book. And you can see here, this is, um, there's a title here for it. Bizarre Mushroom Tales number five. And so I believe this is like a yokai story, which is Japan's version of ghost folklore. And this one's kind of scary, honestly. And um, very cool art, as you can see. But again, this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the plot of the story. This is just a, an information segment of it. But all in all, I feel like this is a really good title. The art's phenomenal. Like, look at that. That is just so, so creepy.
and the lettering is is really good. Living the Lion has decided to keep the original Japanese sound effects, which is kind of a rarity. We're seeing it more now than before. Uh, but to think that comics have been around for almost 30 years in America, and we're just now kind of accepting the original Japanese sound effects is kind of crazy. And look at that. That is just a ghoulish image. Ghoulish. This is a proper word. So again, art's amazing. You're not going to get much in terms of story. It's a, it's a B-movie plot. And then you get this amazing essay. This is the original cover for the release in Japan. And this is kind of like a very sad moment within the comic itself. But it's also my favorite moment. It's very somber, uh, beautiful, and kind of hopeful. And uh, yeah, so this is UFO Mushroom Invasion uh, by Shirakawa Marina. Okay. Now, this is their first title that they decided to start with. And as you can see, there's a bit here that says uh, Smudge 001, her Frankenstein. It also gives you the date. This feels like it's going to be a curated collection of horror manga, which I'm very excited about. Feels very much like the Criterion collection in that way. And um, yeah, so let's talk about it. So Her Frankenstein is like a gothic horror story set in the 80s in Japan. And I know that might sound kind of uh, crazy, and it kind of is, but this is true, like truly a gothic horror story where obsession is the real monster and so in this manga i forget the girl's name but she basically this boy sees the sick girl on the beach and he becomes enamored with her and he goes up to her and they have like a brief conversation and he ends up falling for her but what's interesting is that he's falling for the negative aspects of her she's domineering She's kind of abusive, and he likes that, right? So there's a bit of psychological stuff going on in this story, and I think that's where the gothic stuff comes in. So you have a father who's abusive, and so to run away from that relationship, he goes into another relationship that is kind of abusive, but with this girl, she's obsessed with Frankenstein, the monster. So he decides, I'm going to create a Frankenstein mask, so that way, she will like me. And so that's kind of what happens. So here's he, he's crafting the Frankenstein mask. And this is him wearing it. And what's so interesting with this is that um, we're getting a Frankenstein mask that is photorealistic to the monster itself. Which again is so spooky. You see this big kind of photorealistic version of Frankenstein with a cartoony uh, body of the boy. So it's it's this really cool contrast within the story. And I don't want to give too much away here. Okay, guys, this is a really good one. You should definitely pick it up. It's, it's great for the fall season that we're in currently. This is coming out on Halloween. So perfect Halloween book. And so she kind of encourages this abusive side of this guy. And when he grows up to be an adult, we see this manifest in an interesting way. I don't want to show too much because I really think you guys should read it. And here it's awesome. Like, look at this art. I don't want to say too much about this particular scene. But uh, very good psychological gothic story totally recommend this one it has an air of mystery uh, an air of obsession guilt and trauma your typical gothic fair and then like uh like with ufo mushroom invasion you get like this very nice essay in the back with the full colored um, version of the Japanese manga that released originally. And this is another, uh, I don't believe this was rental, but it was a rarity in that it wasn't a serialized manga. It was released as a 
a single story, which is uncommon for Japanese comics. Usually they're serialized weekly or monthly or, you know, bi-monthly, whatever. And that's a model that failed, I believe. So this is kind of like an archaic manga in Japan. But there's lots of fans, you know. This is a cult book. They clearly state that this wasn't his most famous work, but it's also but it's his most kind of uh, cultish in terms of popularity. Just look at that beautiful colors here, beautiful beautiful colors. And here is some of the actual titles that he made. He made about I, I think twenty eight. And uh, the span of five years, which is a lot. These all look so good. They look almost like shoujo, which is manga for girls. But with obviously a horror twist. So it looks like he's playing into that kind of look. Just phen phenomenal stuff. If this is the quality, if these two books are any indication of the quality that we're going to get, with Smudge, I mean, we're in for like a real treat, guys. So uh, give them a follow, Living the Line. Uh, they're amazing. They're putting out some really great books. I'm excited to see what else they put out in the future. Again, I'm Gerald Varela, and this is Back Corner Comics with Miami's Community Newspapers. I'm signing off. Mm -hmm.